Thank you. In the breakout rooms, we're going to be learning more around like the strategies and insights into different topics that has been prepared for us by our um, facilitators today. And then after 30 minutes, we will join into the main session and hear from each group, the discussions, and then finally wrap it up with the conversation. So I would want to hand it over to Emilia to kick us started with the conversation. Why should we even care about this topic and why does this even matter? Over to you, Emilia. All right. Thank you very much, Sasha. So if we can begin with just a very quick question, just around the room, what do you think of when you hear digital tools? Just to get a sense of what we're all thinking. Um, digital tools, we say it a lot. We have a whole digitalization agenda. Ghana is doing a lot in across different industries and different government agencies to, uh, to be digitally friendly and to accommodate digital in our workflows in various ways. Um, GRE is digital, SNITS is digital. Um, you can, you can now pay your WhatsApp bill, your light bill with short codes with Momo. So what comes to mind when you think of digital tools? It can be an example or it can be a word, it can be a phrase, it can be a feeling or an emotion. It can be stress. Um, I know sometimes when I think of digital tools, I feel frustration because sometimes, you know, depending on the organization, the tools are difficult, tricky to use, complicated, um, not great. So what comes to mind when you think of digital tools? I see, um, okay, Sasha, I'm going to try and interpret your emoji as curiosity. So curiosity comes to mind. No, 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 no. This is probably to the group, I think, but I'm still taking it as an answer to my question. So thank you. Um, anyone else? What comes to mind when you think of digital tools? Do you know of any digital tools? Um, so Eugen says computers and softwares. Okay. All right. So he's gone straight for it. Very nice and simple. He thinks of um, computers and softwares. Um, I've had people tell me when they think of digital tools, they think of expensive. They think of the cost and expense because they are used to it being you know, expensive. Eugen says online platforms, beautiful. And Abna says she thinks of apps. All right, great. So they are... Um, Digital tools, it's very, very interesting. Apps, apps, apps. Uh, thank you, Kofi. So Kofi also thinks of apps when he thinks of digital tools. Um, but right now, in today's digital landscape, the integration of digital tools with design thinking is a key driver for a lot of organizations, largely to enhance productivity and foster innovation across their workflows. We'll go into why it's really important, but I thought for me at least, a great way to understand something is to look at it from the point of view of an example. So there are different types of digital tools for in improved workflows. Depending on your organization, you could be playing around with any one of these. Um, Sasha, so you'll see on the next slide that we have different types of digital tools. We have uh, types for finance and accounting, um, if you are an accountant, you have a set of digital tools that you're likely using, very familiar with. We have CRMs, which I use largely in my work with HubSpot and Asana and all of these different platforms. You have workflow automation tools. We have document management and cloud storage. So I know um, some colleagues of mine, and when I was working with a tech company, you know, we're always talking about their yeah, database management systems and things like that. And we also have communication, collaborative tools um, like Asana or Rebel. What kind of tools do you use in your office? We use, very simple, we use Microsoft Teams, um, which I hated on the onset and then I got used to. Um, I've used different platforms across my work. We use Connect, we use... Um, there's a funny one called Vine or Wine. Vine, I think it's Vine. Um, so many different types of tools. I see in the chat, um, modernized instruments used for innovation or to cause change in the status quo. I love this. Okay, so Edna says digital tools are modernized instruments. And I like the word instruments because it encompasses apps, online platforms, um, all of these fancy things that most people think of when we when it's an instrument, it's a tool used for innovation to cause change. So um, 
these these are not this is not an exhaustive list of example of digital tools that we use. There are so many different types, and they can be as simple as a Google form. Um, I call myself a Google a Google form curator because I use Google form for all kinds of things. And um, very recently, I learned how to use Power BI and um, to improve my presentations and to make them more interactive. Um, I use Google Jamboard. I use a lot of the free tools that Google gets. Um, I don't know which industries we're all coming from. I know a team member of ours works at Unilever, and so he probably has a completely def different set of tools that they use for their process management. So these all tools can be as simple as your Google document, and they can be as fancy and as complicated as enterprise software that are customized for specific things. Um, but why do they matter? Why, why do they matter and why do they improve workflow? So in the next slide, you'll see that we've talked, we've spoken about three key things. So these are three key things that digital tools help us to achieve. Again, not an exhaustive list, but when I think of digital tools and how they improve our workflows, I think of efficiency, I think of collaboration, and I think of adaptability. So when I say efficiency, um, I still argue, I go to the bank, I've signed up for a service, and then they will give me this thick binder notebook type document. And I remember, I won't mention it on the bank in case if you have any of those bankers here, but I remember she she had to, basically, let me, let me use colloquial language, she had to chop the book with her hand, you know what I mean, to flip it, because the book was ripped in half, she doesn't flip it carefully, the paper will fly out. And this was a bank that was encouraging us to, to go digital and to use their app. So I said to her that this is not a very encouraging start if you can't digitalize and automate just signing to, to collect an ATM card. So I thought I was very curious. But these all tools improve our efficiency. And that just means that they have, the beautiful thing I like about it is they reduce repetitive tasks. So the number of times that you have to sign in your dates just to fill a form, you can have a digital tool that just basically, in Google Forms, for example, whenever someone fills, you can automate the date so that the date is automatically filled in. So whenever people are filling a form, they don't have to fill in every single date. Um, centralized data storage. So the entire, I, I have had, I work in organizations where our entire organization, organizational knowledge is on a very long, very detailed, uh, very complex Excel sheet with multiple workbooks and multiple pages and multiple tabs. And over 10 years, 15 years, the organizational data is there from uh, salaries to payroll to um, um, client, client databases, hidden, of course, with various controls in place. But yes, also for collaboration. Um, again, Microsoft Teams, for example, is great for me for collaborating, but most importantly for adaptability. There are a lot of tools, especially the enterprise tools, that allow you to change functions and change use cases and assign different individuals to different roles and as the company evolves you are able to evolve the tool evolve the instruments to go and as with to adapt to the use case of the organization within that specific time frame there are so many different ways in which we use different uh, digital tools and why they matter but i thought if we take nothing away from today's session digital tools help us to improve workflows in the areas of efficiency collaboration and adaptability when we go into our breakout rooms, we'll speak a bit more about what goes into making sure that a digital tool serves this purpose and a digital tools help to make our workflows more effective, collaborative, and adaptive. Awesome. Thanks, Amelia, Thank for kicking us off. I just want to, in the next few slides, just maybe add some numbers to what um, Amelia also shared previously. Um, with some research that my team and I at UX Design um, conducted, well, sort of conducting over a period of um, three years um, into the state of user research experience or user experience research um, and the practice of design thinking on the African continent. So last year, we surveyed around 23 African countries and received around 164 responses. 
And from this insight, we sort of understood that around sort of 50% of people are really applying design thinking in various industries, fintech, health tech, media, and other industries as well. So design thinking is something that is very adaptive to whatever industry that you're in. Out of this um, survey, um, the people that we surveyed, about, are around like 50% are people who work remotely. Therefore, they need to have access to tools that sort of defies geographical barriers. And therefore, they're using a lot of collaborative tools. So at my company like this, we, we heavily depend on Miro um, to really get our, our work going and um, really share and collaborate with people because we are really spread across the African continent. But in the research that we did, we found out that a lot of people, because they are working online, they're using tools like Miro, Notion, Google Doc, as Emilia also shared, Mural. And these are all tools that really foster collaboration and um, uh, collaboration between team members who are maybe spread across um, different geographies. Um, however, this is sort of within the virtual world. And sometimes the tools that really work within the virtual world might not necessarily serve the same purpose or the same context when we are like on site, right? And I guess like now people are slowly moving back into on site work as well. So in the breakout rooms, um, if we can get the breakout rooms uh, started, as we'll be going into the breakout rooms shortly, we would be would hear sort of from the facilitators who are introduced in the next slide, and they would get us thinking into different topics and how design thinking has a role to play in really allowing us to really explore and um, have ways to integrate digital tools in our workflow. So just introducing our facilitators, um, I wouldn't really go much into um, who they are too much as they will share when you're in the breakout rooms. Um, but we have a total of about eight facilitators in the room who will be facilitating around three different topics or um, conversations. We have Prof. Gordon, David Hatchful, um, Eugene, Joanna, um, Kofi, Emilia, Emilia just spoke, um, Dr. Abina and Paulina Eji. Um, in the breakout rooms, we're just going to be looking into three interesting topics here, as I mentioned early on. And I want to invite maybe one person from each of these topics um, to give us a one minute introduction into um, the, the topic so that it can get our participants um, easier to choose the, the, to the room that they want to get into. So maybe for the first breakout room, can we hear from Gordon or um, Gordon, David or Eugene or Kofi, anyone? to give us a one minute introduction. All right, maybe I can start. Thank you, Sasha. Or, thank you, Osia Diego, Sasha. One of the key things we're pointing out here is that um, visualization and uh, you know mapping are extremely important in problem solving. And so we love the journey map because it really unpacks the, it helps unpack processes. It helps unpack. It helps unpack uh, steps that users go through as they experience a problem and try to find solutions to it. It helps unpack how companies build out their the fulfillment of their value proposition. Um, and when you map it out like that, you are able to know where the inefficiencies are. And 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 once you know that, then you can come up with solutions. So we think that a really good way of understanding how to digitize your workflow is to unpack the workflow, right? So awesome. this is where journey mapping comes in. And um very excited to be working with Kofi, David, and Eugene on it. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Gordon, for the introduction. So if you're interested in this, you can um, click on the breakout room one and join that conversation. Can we hear from either um, Dr. Abby, Dr. Abena, or Emilia on the second breakout room? Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Sasha. Um, so in our breakout room, we'll be talking about how 
um, we could use the some of the design thinking tools or the design thinking, the double diamond to be able to track performance and also to be able to collaborate digitally to track our performance. We are used to using the design thinking for product innovation, service innovation, but we want to show another angle where that same double diamond can be used to be able to track your performance and to also collaborate digitally to see how you are doing as a, on a project or as a company. Thank mm. you. Awesome. Thanks, Abena, for the introduction. And finally, can we hear from Joanna on inclusivity in digital workflows for the final breakout room? Hi, Sasha. Thanks uh, for the intro. That was really great. Um, so for the uh, breakout room, we will be looking at what sort of uh, digital tools um, are available um, that would enhance inclusivity for vulnerable people, um, for example, uh, persons with disabilities, and how these digit uh, digitalizing these tools uh, using design thinking can help increase accessibility and inclusiveness for them. So that's just a bit about it. Thanks, Joanna. Awesome. So if we can get the breakout rooms um, started. Um, so we're going to be spending a total of 30 minutes in the breakout rooms. So um, if it is started, I'm sure you would be able to see like a pop up with the different breakout rooms and you're able to join the different ones that you are interested in. Um, kindly let me know, Derry, if it's it's up and um our participants can join the the breakout room now yeah um breakout rooms are opened you just select the room that you want to join and you'll be transferred to that awesome so see you back in 30 minutes Again, improve positive experience of the of the of of both your internal uh, customers who are your employees, um, and then also uh, the your your real customers, your paying customers. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for adding that. Um, other thoughts, maybe um, we haven't heard from. Raynell. Um, hello, Raynell. I don't know if you can speak. Um, whilst Raynell gets ready, uh, Valentine, 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 how, um, How's it so far? What are some of your thoughts in uh, how this process helps in identifying what to digitize and perhaps how to digitize it? Um, yeah, so um, looking at the journey map and discussing my work environment and how um, I apply journey maps, I think. Um, it has given me a lot of exposure as to uh, which areas to focus on when um, in order to reduce the workload or the kind of stresses that we go through in everyday work. For instance, uh, project management that I'm currently now exploring, uh, I've realized that there are a lot of stakeholders that you have to engage, you have to manage, and then um, uh, all of them have different expectations, different um, um, uh, uh, point pain points and I mean um, employing these uh, journey maps and doing uh, individual journey maps for each stakeholder and then their experiences uh, with uh, the projects that we are running uh, it's 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 a lot and I mean uh, I'm exploring um, points where I can employ the digital tools as um, David and Kofi already mentioned um, to make my work easy and uh, everybody have to help team. So I mean, uh, it's it's, it's uh, a very good way to, to look at it. Um, I usually look at the journey maps to 
understand the processes, but I never really thought about employing uh, digital tools at uh, individual stages to make it easier. So I mean, um, this is uh, it's good to listen to facilitators and then people would experience uh, to get an insight into uh, how to make my work easier and then how to employ these tools to uh, my work. That's awesome, uh, Valentine. Uh, Kofi, your hand was up. Yes, but I wanted to quickly add that um, with project management, as you mentioned, right, managing multiple stakeholders with multiple expectations could be very, very, um, could be challenging. And uh, Jenny Mark almost can be a unifying tool that you can point all stakeholders to to say, this is the insight we are having from the experience of the clients. And this is why we have to focus our attention on X, Y, Z, because clearly that is what the data is saying. That's what the, the journey is saying. So it can be a tool to unify your stakeholders so you can get quick buy-in to focus attention and resources on very specific areas, as well as David mentioned that. So I wanted to add, add that. Very true. Thank you very much, Kofi. Typically, we'll go into a breakout room, not a breakout room, we'll go into, onto a sheet and build out a journey map. But I think our conversation is going really well. Perhaps we can, you know, maybe I'll, I'll take a step back and say one of the things, the reasons why this topic came up was that um, we're in the third year of GDIW, the Ghana Digital Innovation Week, and we talk about digital transformation and so forth. And yet, simple steps like, you know, we're not talking about simple uh, steps like helping companies map out their workflows so that they can identify where to digitize, right? And 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 so we wanted to go into GDIW with that conversation, which we did, but and then we also thought we should repeat it. Um, what are some of the opportunities? And this is where maybe we can, we're saying, well, maybe we could do this. Maybe we can, you know, run a project. You know, what are some of the opportunities for, um, you know, helping whether it's companies, whether it's, um, you know, managers and so forth, uh, build out journey maps to, to better digitize, you know, any thoughts? I'm going to start with Kelvin because Kelvin always, you know, Kelvin normally has some wild ideas about, about stuff. Kelvin, are you with us? Or maybe what, what are you working on or what are you interested in or what, what um, aha moment are you getting right now thinking, Charlie, we can be doing this or, or we should be doing that. Anybody? Hello. Yeah. So, hello. Can I go ahead? Yes. 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 Eugene. We yeah. So, minutes, um, I just realized. We yeah. Were told we have three minutes. Yeah. Go on. Okay. So, I I want to talk about this concept that we often refer. We call it boots on the ground. Uh, which we use especially when we are working on recruitment or we are trying to reach out to partners that we want to collaborate on. You have different people in different locations spending time on the field, talking to people, reaching out to them and trying to get them to participate or collaborate. The interesting thing is that everybody in um on the field engages in one form of conversation or communication or the other they pick up information they make notes and all of that um ordinarily you would expect when they come back to the office or when they are back behind their seat they would document all of this okay and that is where sometimes the problem starts from you cannot readily tell what kind of conversation they are having on the field and you cannot also readily tell if they are documenting the exact thing, the, the exact conversation they had on the field when they get back. 
and this were integrating some digital tools into the whole um, work process become um, an opportunity to get better at understanding what kind of engagement is happening. So um, there are some couple of tools that have been deployed recently. When you go to visit a client or you go to visit a partner, right from there while you have the conversation, the, 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 the platform is to help you know, get the scenario. What conversation do you say if the partner turns out, if the prospective partner turns out to be this type, or what conversation do you say if it meets the persona that you are looking for? You try and capture everything there and there, live as you engage in the conversation, and everything is consolidated. And then the people who have to analyze and see what is happening, um, how effective are we getting? Are we really working close to the way we want to attract um, or sign on partners and so on and so forth? And I believe that is something that really can help with um, the way teams measure performance, measure their work, and then also see whether they are being effective. Um, there are, of course, the um, uh, downsides to it in the sense that um, out on the field, people who can just end up focusing so much on getting things right in their recording and not focus so much on the other things that happen in the conversation, such as body language and, and so on and so forth. So, um, But clearly, there's a lot of advantages that infusing digital tools in the process brings. Yeah. Awesome. Um, very good point. Points. It looks like we might have about two minutes, or maybe a minute left to go to go back to the plenary. Um. So. Um, any any additional thoughts? Anybody else? I mean, what are you inspired by? But just the thought of using, um journey maps to do uh, uh, find or incorporate digital tools Prof, i didn't quite get your question but i wanted to quickly add in one thing which is i mean very fundamental as well to design thinking is um, an attempt to incorporate digital tools etc um it's super important we don't forget people are going to use these tools so um getting get um getting insight from people in terms of what their frustrations are um, and where you can bridge that is one key, um, one key aspect that the journey map can help you pull out very quickly. So if anybody's wondering, how do you, you know, set up a journey map? Yeah, you just want to speak to people, get some insights, and you can easily map them on two axes: one negative experience, two positive experience, but on a timeline from when they start to where they end, and you clearly see where the good are and where the bad are. So just wanted to. Add that you know it's people, 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 people who use the digital tools. It's important to map out their experience around us, those tools as well. Does anybody else have any thoughts? Where where I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to figure out. Let me let me just be honest here. What I'm trying to figure out here is should we build out a project on helping companies develop journey maps so they can identify where they can digitize and maybe work with digital tool providers to sort of provide services that's that's my that's what i've been thinking about talking through this so uh yeah that's one okay so um there's actually a topic that's i've also really thought about for a while so um it's just it doesn't have to be a company per se but it's just something that i was thinking around let's say like an industry blueprint, right? So in the context of um, maybe if, since we are using car sales, we actually have a structure or a typical map that can benchmark what a good service looks like in the car purchase space. And then these are things or blueprints or materials that we could actually make available, try and test, actually have actionable insights on this to see from an employee point of view, how well it works because it makes onboarding easier for new 
employees within the space, for example. And then in the customer, for from the customer perspective to it kind of also serves as a benchmark of certain standards they can expect. And I think this would actually go further to help um, technically innovate the spaces that have these things because now it becomes that benchmark that if your company or your um, team or whichever don't have this system or are not adhering to this system, uh, it means your service is not the best compared to your competitors like was mentioned earlier. And then as a whole, now the industry can innovate by having these minimum standards and then building on it over time. Yeah, I think that's just my point. So a journey map will be crucial to making that happen. All right. So um, we have 13 seconds. This is great. Desmond, would you like to share um, on our behalf in the room? If you don't mind. either dollars or pounds um, or um, what they call euros from customers and then also sell them on to others who needed them for import and export. And at the end of every month, my boss would just walk into our office and say, Abna, how much dollars have you been able to buy or how much foreign currency have you been able to buy from your customers? There was no question about, did you have the resources that you needed to get those customers? Or what activities have you undertaken? What process have you gone through to be able to purchase these foreign currencies? And what were your results or what were your expectations? The only question I was asked was, how much dollars have you been able to buy? Um, but obviously, if I was going to do that, I would need some resources. For instance, I would need phone credits. I would need a car to be able to visit customers. I will need to have a laptop to be able to work and put in my results. But I was not asked any of those questions. The question was just, how much dollars have you been able to purchase, right? So it is important as, as team leaders, as managers, as owners of our companies to ask ourselves these six questions to be able to track the progress that we are making, to see whether the goal or the mission or the vision that we set at the beginning, have we achieved it? And if we didn't achieve it, we could easily go back to one of these elements to see what went wrong. What do we need to do? Do we need to have more inputs or do we need to change our activities? And did our activities produce the reside outputs or not? And what benefits are we making? So in this next role, you will see that I gave an example. So one of the outputs that you could talk about was a marketing campaign. Probably you want to launch a marketing campaign. If you want to have a marketing campaign launch, you need to think back and say, what activities do we need to undertake to be able to have our marketing campaign launch? And if these are the activities, then what resources do we actually need to undertake these activities? And the other question you ask is, why do we want to have a marketing campaign launch? And the outcome that you want to have is to have an increase in sales. And if you have an increase in sales, what's the greater impact on the company, you have profit or you have increase in revenue, right? So if the increase in revenue is not happening, you can easily go back and say, um, did our sales increase? If you are focusing on the sales team, did our marketing campaign get launched, right? So if you have these variables in place, you can easily track performance. And if things are not going as you expect them to go, you could easily go back and track them. And down here, I've, I've written what we call indicators. So indicators actually tell you whether you have achieved your outputs or outcome or impact. And usually those deal with numbers. So probably you ask your, um, how you track the outputs is how many people have been able to sell to? How many people have our marketing campaign reached? How many people have our salespeople been able to reach out to? So this is one way or the most effective way that I know to be able to track your performance. Now, we've been talking about digital tools. And since COVID, you realize that a lot of people are working remotely. In-person is not as common as it used to be. Well, so, so far in my experience- I believe tracking it, performance. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, mm -hmm. it has been the sheet Sorry. and the- it has been the Excel sheets and work plans. And I must say, it becomes sort of a document that I just cloud somewhere. So 
because it's cumbersome to keep track of it, actually. Yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah, they are not very productive. Um, probably yeah, no. because... They especially when it comes to the... Especially when it comes to the end of the year, you have to do appraisals. <laughs> and you have to go through all those sheets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that, that has been my experience. It's a frustrating experience. Um, but probably it's also because we don't have a lot of people with the skills to build dashboards. Um, okay. So, maybe, yeah, maybe that's, that's the reason why we, or that's the reason for resorting to the Excel sheets and the work plans on the Word document. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's very true. That's very true. But I think I, I, I work um, in a tertiary institution and, and these days if you give um, the students challenges to build some of these, because the first dashboard I got to know about was actually giving us a challenge to a set of students and they did build a beautiful okay. dashboard and it was so easy to get the information, write reports, okay. everybody inputting their data. Mm. So it was easy to, to do appraisals at the end as well. So, cool. yeah. Thank you so much, Andrew, for sharing. Anyone else who would like to share on how they've been tracking their performance? Okay. I do have an example on the next slide to bring it a bit closer to home. And then probably somebody will try their hands on see, um, see whether we can do it for your organization as well. So this was mainly for um, a police service. And they were thinking about um, creating a specialized gender dex. So they started from um, the inputs. I mean, the, the objectives was to have a gender dex. And so they thought about what inputs do we need to be able to create that dex for, for the gender? So they needed money and they also needed um, staff who had knowledge um, and networks of um, the national police. And then what activities did they need to undertake to be able to um, with the inputs that they were given. And one of the activities was to recruit and train female police officers. Remember, it was a gender dex that you were trying to create. And what was the, the output that they were expecting? They were expecting that once they recruit female police officers, there will be diversity in the National Police Service because um, until then, um, police women were mainly males but they wanted to create diversity. So the output that they were expecting that if they're able to recruit and train more female police officers, the diversity in the National Police Service will happen. And what will be the outcome? The outcome will be policing services are more accessible to women and girls now. But what will be the greater impact? The greater impact will be safety for, for women and the girls as well. So this is just an example I picked up from the website to kind of break it down. I remember when I was also learning how to track performance, it was it was all mixed up in my head and it was a bit challenging. But with time, as you keep on practicing, um, it becomes part of you. So I decided to pick this example and share. And I was hoping that somebody would take a stab up at it. Maybe somebody's on a project or is in an organization. Try to use these variables and let's see what we can do together. Maybe somebody can think about inputs, another person about activities, another output, somebody else outcomes and somebody else impacts. And then we'll be done. There are seven of us, seven of us here. Emilia and I have spoken, so that leaves five. So maybe the five can take us through. Um, I'm, I'm struggling because of the nature of my work um, in terms of output or... Mm -hmm. The outcomes, it's not very clear what the outcomes are um, because I do business coaching. We have teams we coach. Uh, so, though for- Why do you coach them on? Um, so, it's Agritech Competition, KIC, Cosmos Innovation Center. Um, so, okay. for me personally, or for the team I work with, our outcomes will be, let's say, as many teams as possible getting to the final, so actually getting the money. That would be our personal outcome, but not necessarily for the organization to get it. Um, yeah, but yeah. And I think that is because that's the benefits that they are supposed to get. So outcomes yeah. are mainly the benefits of what yeah. you are doing. So the benefits is that as many people get to their finals, right? Yeah. 
still. So that that will be the outcome for for my team. Um, in terms of so, in terms of the output, I would let me see. Um, the team is being able to produce good. First of all, that the kind of document they have to put into their data room should be good uh, for reviews. Mm -hmm. Uh, their pitching should be good, mm -hmm. and their pitch, pitch slides should also be presentable. And they should understand their business models. They should have a good grasp of their business models. So that would be the out, the output of the work we do. In terms of activities, it will be... So, um, sorry to jump in, but I realize that you've, you've mentioned more than one output, right? Yeah, so let's say quality of documentation. Um, Mm -hmm. under, understanding or having a good grasp of their business model and their business environment, and also mm -hmm. um, being able to pitch, uh, because at the end of the day, a lot of the judgment will be based on the ability to pitch their ideas. Okay. So the quality okay. of pitching. So, what activities do you think you need to undertake? Um. So. Our basic activities are organizing training. So we have to identify good trainers for them. Mm -hmm. um, and to also organize one-on-one um, -on -one coaching sessions with them. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, one thing I missed this year was I was coaching them, but not really checking as to if they are really implementing the coaching, you know. Mm -hmm. So I missed that this year. So probably uh -huh. implement a, a system where I get to actually break down what they are supposed to do and do a weekly check of those outcomes. So a weekly checks of um, output. I'll put it that way for the teams, for the, for the business teams. Or weekly reviews that would be that would be good. yeah so the inputs uh, i believe you uh, hello hi we can hear you andrew okay uh so the yeah. input the input then will be oh go ahead uh, the input will be, let's say, um, the time spent with the teams. Uh, basically, yeah, definitely money. Money is going to be needed for us to be able to at least compensate. I don't think we pay our coaches um, as much as they might be worth because there's a bit of a social a um, service to it, but to at least to compensate them for the time they use in uh, coaching or training our teams. Um, in terms of input, and also if I'm looking at on my part, I'll say I will have to be able to be abreast with um, the right kind of information example like um this kind of activity so um yes those are the kind of resources you need the right people to coach them and also um the time that we need to make to um interact with them on a regular basis okay I like the way you've taken your time to to talk through and how you realize that you missed one way of checking <laughs> whether they're actually using the coaching that they're using them or not. So when you actually sit down to break it down, you realize that there are a lot of things that probably you may be missing as a team or as an individual, right? Yeah. And I don't know where you have your sessions. Are they Zoom sessions or they are in person? Yeah, Zoom. If it's in Zoom. person, then it's Zoom. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, it means one other you thing need is um... Wi Fi. Yeah. Initially, I thought the Zoom would not be effective because you are training them to pitch. Uh, so mm -hmm. I was looking for ways to interact physically, but it wasn't working. 
But later on, I realized that the few Zoom okay. sessions would affect because they, they will still remember what they are saying. So in the absence of physical mm -hmm. interaction, Zoom mm -hmm. works very well. Uh, though. So that's one thing. I learned through that journey too, that the digital solution can work as well as the physical solution. So probably now that you are talking about digital solution, when we an indicator could be you will check how many people actually join your Zoom meetings, yes. right? That yes. yeah, so that could be one indicator to see whether the Zoom meetings are effective. Yes. So how many people join? And if you want, you could actually also um, disaggregate by gender, male, mm. female, or mm. how many teams join. If you have 10 teams, how many teams join? So that could be one of the indicators um, that you could use as well. Okay. To check. okay. And I think one and of the inputs would be also that mm -hmm. a proper plan for the activities. Okay. A proper plan for the activities. As I mentioned, uh, how the reviews will be taking place. So a proper plan and breakdown of the bulk activities they need to undertake so that they will be able to easily mm -hmm. manage it to week by week instead of having, let's say, a month, then they have to deliver something on the mm -hmm. deadline. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And thinking about your, your, pitching, your pitching thing as well, could also check and see how, what percentage of your teams are able to pitch well, right? Yes. That could also be an indicator for you. Yes. So just trying to pick from your submissions, showing what the indicators could be. So doing this exercise, you realize that if you pick all these variables and actually take your time to think through, you realize that they are missing some things and you yes. could also... um write down some things that, that could help you track um, your progress. Yes. Thank yes. you so much for sharing. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone else who would like to say, I think we just have about one minute and then they are taking us back to the main room. Maybe there are questions, contributions, something I missed. Okay. Anybody would like to share one thing that they are taking away from this breakout room? Just so I'm sure <laughs> I was able to send it out well. Anything that you have taken away from tonight's session? Or what are we going to do differently to track our personal performance at our workplaces? Maybe ask for more inputs from our supervisors, from our companies. Realize that we are missing some inputs that could help us perform better. I think... Um... Definitely, definitely assessing my personal work as well. Um, we we have this interesting thing where each each month, it, sorry, at the start of each year, um, we we work with our um COP, our chief of party, to set personal and professional goals, and the personal are as much as uh almost as much as professional, um, but a lot of the times we focus on the professional goals which is, you know, to go in our career or to get this promotion or to, to do this one thing or another. And then the personal goals, you know, taking a course or, or um, just um, personal growth, personal growth towards our career, but not in relation to specific, you know, work plans or organizational objectives gets lost. So actually that was what came to mind as you were speaking, was reminding myself, of my mm -hmm. personal goals as well yeah 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 great and looking at um going back to what you said earlier where do you find yourself um, mm -hmm. as an individual which space do you find yourself in as an individual your environment yeah. which i feel most of us don't assess right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. joanna has also made a very important comment which i would like to read quality of outcome and impact also depends on the quality of the input right which I, which I believe is very important because if you don't have, for instance, if you are doing Zoom meetings and your Wi-Fi is bad or you don't have Wi-Fi, you have to keep on buying credits. Um, at a point in time, the credits may run out <laughs> or you have a break in communication just like I had. And then the, 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 the outcome and the impact may not be as I want to because there's a constant break. 
um, in communication. So um, our time is up. And what I will say is that with the, um, the Excel sheets that we have and the loads and loads of information, um, give your IT department or give some students in the tertiary institute a talent and then they will build a dashboard for you. And that information will stay with the organization for a very long time and appraisals get easier at the end of the year. So thank you very much for joining me in the breakout room and um, we'll meet in the main session. Thank you. Just checking if everyone is here. Awesome. Okay. So maybe we can just um, spend a couple of minutes, go around the different groups and just share maybe um, some key takeaways um, from the discussions in the in the breakout rooms, such that we are able to share between the, the different um, breakout rooms because just... Um, one person joined one one group and wasn't able to like um move around the different breakout rooms. So maybe from the first breakout room, let me go back to yes. The first breakout room, the journey mapping and VFB. Can we get anyone from that breakout room to give us some key takeaways that they are taking from that discussion and some action points they are going to use to um integrate into their workflow essentially the topic that we are discussing anyone from breakout room one yes, okay uh, i see yeah, this one yes yeah hi hello everybody um so with the with our breakout room we went into basically what um a journey map is which is more or less a visualization of the step-by-step -step process that um, a customer goes through when utilizing a service or even how um, a service is structured, right? So uh, we went into the different ways to actually identify um, the steps that goes into a particular service. So in that case, we used um, buying a new car, for example, or buying a car and then the steps that you go through in buying the car and then which of those steps um, is positive or is negative, for example, and then how that process can be made better or that experience can be made better from the customer. And then we also explored how from the company side of things too, using a, um, a journey map or visualizing your process would actually help you to benchmark against industry standards to see uh, or at least compare maybe per the industry. These are the things that people are doing. This is the good side. This is the bad side. And then with our business or with our company, these are the areas that we can be better or compare to the industry. These are the areas that we could better. And then we just also went into more of other use cases of the journey map and even a discussion on how the journey map can be used to innovate an industry, for example, by setting a benchmark standard that customers and employees can expect of how a typical service can be, yeah. I think that's a general summary. Awesome. Thanks, this one. I think that's like super comprehensive. I wasn't able to join the sessions, but I think just by you explaining things, I have a good understanding of what's happening there. And I hope the other team also got a good understanding. Um, maybe just one last person from the VFB team. Um, what key takeaway are taking home aside from what this mother said? Is there anything that you are going to involve into your workflow um, that hasn't already been mentioned by Desmond? Any final question from that breakout room? Valentine. Valentine, okay. Hi, everyone. So uh, the key takeaway point from here is that uh, from my side, uh, I'm basically into project management. So the key takeaway is that um, in order to satisfy uh, diverse stakeholders with different expectations and interests, uh, I use a journey map to kind of communicate uh, reasons for certain actions in order to be able to sell um, 
uh, certain ideas to the, the diverse stakeholders in order to uh, uh, get it easier to uh, get some of the goals and then things that we want to do accepted. Because if they see the um, Jenny map and then they see the reasons for certain actions, it will be easier to get certain points across and allow for um, easier implementation of something. So that's my key takeaway point for the discussion we had. Okay. Thanks, Valentine. I think you were a bit muffled at the ending, but I think we got the general gist. Thanks for sharing. And I'm glad that this this um is helping give some more action points, take away and involve into your workflow. Um, can we also um get someone from the other team? Say the um, metrics and dashboard performance. I think I joined this briefly. We're talking about like the double diamond and it's um helping with your performance. Would like to hear more about that in the key takeaways. Um so my key takeaway was uh that um taking time to review your activities and your and your desired outcomes you, you be able to identify something that's missing from you know what you have been doing and using that you can improve upon your your planning and your operations so that was the key takeaway for me awesome thanks andrew for that brief um key takeaway any final person um to throw some more light um aside what andrew already shared maybe amelia or joanna joanna did you join that group Yes, I was on the on the group with uh, Dr. Abby and Joanna. Um, I think Andrew capt captures it beautifully. And we've had a lot of conversations around um, how we measure and the different ways that we measure. Um, I think some of the key outcomes of the conversation was just uh, making sure that there's relevance between what we are measuring to the industry that we work in. So if you're in a hospitality you know, people are a lot more interested in your customer care or customer service, whereas perhaps if you're in a different type of industry, um, that might not be the first thing that comes to mind when you're measuring impact. Um, but also uh, measuring performance also in ways that your customers can understand and appreciate the value of what you're sharing. Um, so those are one of the key, key outcomes. And um, we have a lot of great examples from the, the group as well. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Amelia, for sharing. So unfortunately, we sort of collapsed the final um, breakout room into the different sections. So we weren't able to really delve deep into inclusivity and digital workflows, but hopefully that will be able to come in um, next um, virtual sessions. Um, I think what I'm like really interested in is how do we carry these conversations into actions? And um, when I joined the first group, um, breakout room, I think I had some conversations around more actionable points. And maybe I'll hand it over to Gordon to speak a little bit about that and give us the closing remarks and we would um, be able to round up the conversation. Gordon? Yeah, let me do that and, and maybe turn, uh, turn it over to Kofi as well. So <laughs> what I was saying was that, you know, in our nation, you know, in our in our national drive for digital transformation, uh, what we realized, especially going into DG, uh, DGI, uh, Ghana Digital Innovation Week, the third year, is that it doesn't seem like it's trickling down to SMEs and and even, even corporations, right? And we know very well as design thinking practitioners that if we use journey mapping as a tool to help people um, out unpack their workflows, be a lot easier for them to identify areas where they can uh, digitize uh, you know, some of these tasks. And so could we maybe, should we start a project on this where uh, it's, it's like a product we go out and we help companies journey map and we work with digital tool providers to then plug in the holes this is this is where we we left it off and i think um um 
uh sorry i'm drawing andrew no, and desmond desmond actually sort of uh supported that point as well and and so i think i think that's where we're at uh, i um i don't know if we have any specific commitments i can't remember if desmond made a commitment but you know maybe kofi i don't know if you want to add to it but i yeah. think it would be really good to see if you know there's interest in something like that mm. Awesome. Um, Kofi, would you like to add? No, Prof brilliantly summarized it. So really good point. Awesome. So maybe no commitment yet, but it's something that we started um the conversations around and possibly maybe um a part of the um the group as well to maybe carry it forward as well. Um I think at this point, we will sort of round up the conversations. We've, um, I think we're at 7.30 now, almost 7.30 now. Um, maybe I'd call on Emilia or Dr. Um, Dr. Gordon to give us maybe any final remarks and any next steps for these conversations. And we can call this um, event closed. Emilia or Gordon? Uh, why don't we turn it to Emilia and <laughs> Matt? Emilia and Matt. Matt normally closes for us. Okay. So, Matt, I'll hand this over to you. Um, just to say thank you to everyone for joining today's session. It was really fantastic hearing all of the different perspectives. We hold our monthly meetups, um, and we will be holding it out till the end of the year. And Matt will be sharing all of the links and all of the details for upcoming sessions. Um, awesome. I do get a few people reaching out to ask how they can become design think can design thinkers and how they can begin to practice. So we'll also start to share communications around that for those of you who want to learn more or become part of the community of practice. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, hello. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think Emilia has said almost everything I had to say. I uh, just want to say thank you to everyone who uh, joined us. We want to thank our facilitators. I had the opportunity to uh, enter some of the rooms and uh, it was great conversations. And uh, we hope that we picked up a lot of insights that you'll be applying in your day-to-day uh, -day, uh, office work or your day-to-day -day life. And uh, as Emilia rightly said, we do have monthly meetups. And uh, as the days go by, we we get started on planning the next meetup and uh, you'll all be informed through emails and those who want to join design thinking will send out a, an email about what to do and the steps to take to join our platform uh, once again thank you all and uh, we look forward to uh, having conversations with you again on our next meetup have a good evening <laughs>